Hello everybody, it's Sesame Man Haven here today, and we're going to be going over perks and basic builds. So we're going to do a quick run through for all the perks. Uh, a couple of them we're going to stop, uh, read over, and I'll give you guys a couple of ideas on what they're used for and how useful they are. But we'll go into more detail on live streams than we will inside the video here. The video is just going to be quick setups, uh, reasons why I recommend to use these setups, and uh, some perks to avoid overall. So, starting off, we have Quick Learner. Uh, just avoid this perk. Like, um, if you have, let's say, six perks inside your, your crew, so you have six perks right now active and available, and you need those last three and you're willing to sacrifice, let's say, um, silent driving or just whatever you choose, like sacrificing, sure, Quick Learner can be a massive, you know, boost to unlocking those last three perks or maybe even your last four perks you know but whenever you first put together a crew quick learner i do not recommend to have as your first perk on a tank now next up we have born leader this is one of those skills one of those crew perks i recommend to have on every single build that you put together the 10 percent increase to skill effectiveness and crew performance the crew performance is going to be the biggest part of this perk and skill effectiveness um skills with 10 percent will now have 11 percent skills with 25 percent will get a 2.2 percent increase so this skill can really help out next up we have last stand 25 percent increase to crew performance when under 10 percent health now this would be a situational perk. Uh, honestly, I might start running this on my mouse or maybe even my E100 just because it sounds fun. And I want to see how quick we can get the reload in on the, the E100 or the mouse. Maybe even the Ag Panther E100 would be pretty fun to do that on too. And along with stacking Adrenaline Rush on with Last Stand would be a really good way to do it. Now, Rapid Loading, this is an optional perk. It's going to benefit auto loaders heavily. Um, some fast fire rate mediums, I would not recommend using rapid rapid loading on just because they already have a fast reload. What is the extra 0.2 seconds going to do for you? Now, Iron Mace, 25% decrease to the effect that distance has on shell penetration ability. This perk, let's say you fire. You are 450 meters away from the target. You're going to lose about 40 millimeters of penetration. Iron Mace will decrease that effect that you have on distance and that's all it is so the longer you longer range you are this perk would be really good on sniper tanks uh, but if let's say you have a brawler like the is4 for instance this perk would not be beneficial to the is4 at all so close quarter brawlers t11 oi5 is7 just there, there's a couple out there wz5a uh, the quillen this perk would not be beneficial now, Deadeye, this is one of those perks that I recommend people to run, but not on 120 millimeter guns. This perk affects 130 and up guns more than it affects 127s and 120 millimeters and under. Now, if you're in lower tier matchmaking and you're running this perk, let's say you're in the T29, um, Deadeye can be a really good perk playing as a top tier heavy tank or even a top tier tank destroyer but depending on the caliber of the gun dead eye can be absolutely devastating one of my favorite tanks to run with dead eye would be the 60 tp it is just an overall great setup to run on the 60 tp next up we have gunsmith now if you guys are watching this the day the video comes out gunsmith is right now broken if you guys want to put it on be my guest the 30% increase to accuracy of damage gun is actually applied the entire time the perk is on. So, don't have too much fun with that knowledge. <laughs> I, I, I put it on a couple of tanks and it just feels dirty. Rapid aim increased to turret and rotation, no, turret rotation and gun rotation speed. Now, for super heavies, this is a really good one. Um, my E100 has it, my mouse has it, uh, my T11 5 has it. There's a couple of tanks that I actually recommend to use Rapid Aim on. Now, Rapid Aim, just being able to get on target quick, it's, it's going to help out. You know, being able to rotate your turret quickly. For instance, uh, as an example, the mouse, you know, you run fuel and then you run Rapid Aim because you want to angle your turret. You don't want to take forever to angle your turret. Being able to 
aim over, take a quick pop shot, and then being able to rotate it back, having that extra 10% rotation speed is going to help you tremendously. Next up, we have steady aim, 10% increase to accuracy. This perk I recommend to have on tanks that have over 0.36 gun dispersion or even over 0.35 gun dispersion. Steady aim can really help out those tanks a lot. Along with that, we have Snapshot, which is 12% increase to accuracy during turret rotation and run and gun. Now, if you're running rapid aim, you're also going to want to run Snapshot on that too to counteract the gun dispersion increase during the turret rotation. Uh, next up, we have run and gun, 10% increase to accuracy while moving. Now, keep in mind at the moment of this video being published, all of these perks apply at once. You do not need to be moving. You do not need to have a rotating turret. They're all applied dead set to increase accuracy overall now if you want to get away with it you know you, you could easily throw on steady aim and snapshot and get away with it on a couple of tanks now next up we have clutch braking and off-road driving clutch braking is 7.5 percent increase to vehicle haul rotation speed which means let's say you have 100 Haul Traverse. The 7.5 is just an additional 7.5 kilometers. Um, with, let's say, 10% or 10 Haul Traverse, this would jump you up by an additional, eh, let's say, 0.7 of a kilometer. So, I mean, for every single 10 kilometers, 0.7 a kilometer, well, 0.7 of uh, Traverse speed, you know, once you hit like that 35 category for traverse speed, this perk really helps out. Along with that, off-road driving, 15% increase to handling on soft terrain, 7.5 increase to handling on moderately soft terrain. Uh, combining clutch braking along with off-road off driving could help out a lot, depending if you're inside of a tank that just has horrible ground resistances or just has a really slow traverse speed to begin with. Uh, best tanks that would suit these two perks right here for clutch braking and off-road driving are your tank destroyers that do not have a rotating turret. Or if you want to be able to get the upper hand advantage inside of a brawling match in up close and personal combat, being able to get your armor angled quickly, 60 TP for instance, you know, just snap around that armor. It's going to make it a lot harder for mediums and light tanks just to be able to circle you. Up next we have uh, <laughs> trick driving, 30% reduction in fall damage. If you find yourself ramping off of cliffs or falling down hills and killing yourself, this perk could be for you. It's not for me. I had it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to skip this one. <laughs> All right, next up, silent driving. 55% decrease to the effect that of driving on your vehicle's camel factor and effective on light vehicles. Well, as it says there, don't use this on a light tank. I also don't re recommend using silent driving on a heavy tank either. And some tank destroyers, I would recommend using silent driving, but a lot of them I would not recommend. For instance, we're going to be using the mouse a lot for examples today. If you put silent driving on a mouse, its camouflage value stock is 0.1. 0.01, actually. It is no camo whatsoever. Putting silent driving on a mouse would give you a zero... Well, yeah, 0 0.015, which still doesn't help. I find silent driving to help out mediums a lot. A lot more than it does on some heavies. Some heavies, this can be extremely useful. Kron and Wagen would actually be helping out a lot with silent driving. Along with that, there, there's a couple of them. You'd have to go through and look up the statistics of each one of the tanks. Up next, we have Camouflage Experience. Expertise. Expertise. It's expertise, guys. Not experience. My brain has farted. Yes, 10% increase to your vehicle's camouflage factor. Now, along with this, you're going to be running camouflage in your tank, too. Just to give you that extra, I think it's 2.5% that the camo actually applies. So, you know, that's an immediate increase to your camouflage value of 12.5%. Now, for medium tanks, this can help out a lot. My LPC, as you guys can see, this is how it's set up. That's what we're running. Uh, up next, we have Muffled Shot. Now, this is going to be a perk that I recommend for almost 95% of tanks in the game. And the reason why I recommend Muffled Shot for almost every single tank in the game is because of foliage. 
If you can knock over some trees and get stuff set up, Muffled Shot is going to help you stay concealed no matter what you do. I've had, if my 4005, I run with Muffled Shot, and if I'm behind a tree line firing and I made a nest, I do not get detected. I rarely get detected when firing inside my 4005 unless I'm in the open. Now, up next, we have Green Thumb. 10% increase to vehicle's camouflage factor when in foliage. This actually helps out with terrain, tree knocking, everything else. This is a really good perk to have. Um, whenever I'm done recording this, I'm probably going to be swapping out camouflage expertise for Green Thumb. So, up next, we have Sixth Sense. The Sixth Sense is one of those perks I recommend to have as a first perk on your tank. We're going to have one more that I recommend as a first perk too, just depending on what tank you're in. If you're inside of a light tank, Sixth Sense just helps you know, I'm detected, it's time to move. Now, up next, we have Situational situational Awareness. 6% increase to max view range. This will bump you up from 440 view range with coded optics up to 466. That's going to give you an upper hand advantage on trying to outspot, or if you're just trying to do spotting in general to get the assist damage, this will help you out a lot. Now, some light tanks, I would actually recommend to take situational awareness as your first perk if you're looking to be a passive scout. <clears throat> or to use Sixth Sense. You know, Sixth Sense will just let you know it's time to fall back. But situational awareness will give you the upper hand advantage to spotting them out before you get spotted. Up next, we have comms technicians. 30% uh, increase to radio range, 20% increase to radio range of nearby allies. This perk is extremely effective on light tanks for assist damage or communication overall with the entire team depending on your build. Um, comms technician I do recommend to have on a light tank just to help you get all the juicy assist damage. For instance, let's say you have 700 meters of radio range and then increase that by 30%. You know, that's just, it, it's just going to give you, best example I can give you, Light tank, you're inside your light tank, you're on Prokhorovka. Your artillery are located at the base, you're up in the top left down the 1-2 line, you're up in a bush, you're camoed out, you're not being detected, you spotted out a couple of guys in front of you. Artillery takes a shot. They're out of your 700 meter stock range, but because of comms technician, you're going to be getting all the assist damage that artillery is sending out for you. So, this perk extremely useful along that with that we have marked target three seconds increase to duration of target enemies detection time i do recommend using this perk for light tanks um depending on your medium the m48 patent could get away with running marked target along with the m60 or the m46 patent um also the leopard one could get away with running this too just for top tiers there are a couple of tier eights that this could be really beneficial on too and a couple of tier nines but you know i don't want to make the video last too long no, we're already at 13 minutes. <laughs> Supply conversion. I, I think I, I said that right. You know what? It, it's it's supply. It's a recharge time bonus. 15% increase to consumable recharge speed. If you are not a premium consumable using person, do not use this perk. However, inside heavy tanks or even some tank destroyers, supply conversion can be one of the best perks that you have on. Now, up next, we have Firefighting. This does not affect the in-fight advantage at all. It's more of a defensive perk, but if you get set on fire, it's going to help you. It'll keep you alive a little bit longer. You know, might, might save you one hit point. <laughs> firefighting is a good perk to have, depending on the tank that you're in. Some Russians, this is going to be your best friend. A couple of Tier 10 British... That, well, one specifically, I think everyone knows what I'm talking about, the front-mounted engine, the FV. Yeah, firefighting could be your best friend. Along with that, we have fire prevention, 33% decrease to chance of fire. Keep in mind, 33% chance decrease is more like a 6% on most tanks that have a 20% fire chance. There are some tanks out there with 15, 18, 12, you know, then just minus 33%. So if you got a 10% chance of getting set on fire, 33% minus... That's only a 7% chance overall being set on fire now. So, fire prevention is a perk depending on your fire chance of your engine could be beneficial or it could be a wasted perk. Up next, we have safe stowage. Safe stowage is 
you know, type 5. Type 5 would be a really good example because everyone knows where to shoot him in the front. Um, on the left and right side, you have the flat cheeks that if you can go through them, that's where the ammo rack is located. So type 5, type 4, I'd recommend that you safe stowage. Uh, there's a couple of Russians out there since all the ammo is located in the back of the turret that this perk could really help out. STI, for instance. ST1, sorry, it's not an I, it's a 1. Could be really useful. Up next, we have armor angling. 5% decrease to damage received. There is also a piece of equipment in the game that does the same effect for a total of 10% damage decreased. I wonder why tanks have damage resistance, but no comment. Um, I find that the mouse benefits heavily from this. I love my mouse. I, I don't know what it is right now, but I just enjoy playing my mouse, even though I'm getting shot in the face with standards and getting pinned. I, I still like it. Now, you can get a total of 10% decreased in damage, which actually the best way to look at this is 10% increased health. So there you go. 5% increased health, 10% increased health. It's going to take one equipment, one perk. Your choice if you want to use it, highly situational. I don't recommend it. It's fun. Do it. Just do it. Controlled impact. 20% decrease to ram to... Well, 20% decrease to ram damage to self. 20% increase to ram damage to enemy. Along with a spy liner, you can get a total of 70% damage reduction from ramming. And also still do 20% more. Now, depending on the weight of your vehicle, this perk could be super nice. Uh, for instance... The Object 260, which is, yes, a free XP... Yeah, you need to use free XP conversion to get that tank. A total of, like, 315,000. But the tank is fast. It weighs a lot. Put a spa liner on it. Controlled impact. You'll be lucky to hit people for, like, 800. Go have a blast, guys. Seriously. I've been... I do it occasionally, and each time I land a, land a ram, it is just the greatest feeling in the world. Up next, we have Pain Tolerance. 20% decrease... Chance of crew injury. Um, don't use this perk if you're using premium consumables. I it, 60 seconds on the recharge time to get your crew back up. I don't see the point in running this perk. If you're a free-to-play player, I do see the point in running this perk to help you try and conserve your perk. Well, conserve your consumable inside the match. But other than that, if, if you're spending the 20,000 credits every single match to run this perk, you know, there are 20,000 credits to use the consumables to not need to use this perk. There's a lot of advantages to running a lot of consumables. And yeah, it's, I, I don't know. Pain tolerance would be one of those perks that I, I just don't know on. Up next, we have general mechanic, 10% increase to repair speeds of all damaged modules. Now, general mechanic... There's only one category of tanks I will use General Mechanic on, and that is turretless tank destroyers. That is it. I do not use them on any other tank. Because we already have, as we're going to be coming back, Born Leader for the 10% increase for skill effectiveness and crew performance. Crew performance affects repair time. So 10% along with that 25%, and then let's say you have consumables on. So the way that the consumables work, I believe it's 25% repair increase, which we're actually going to look at. This is the last perk, by the way. So general mechanic, the reason why I don't recommend using it is because you have 10% repair speed, 15% repair speed between your two consumables. Along with that crew protection, 25%, 20%. So really, you don't need to run the extra crew protection there. But for repair, uh, this was something that I was talking to somebody about, and I, I gave them my reasons why. Overall, you can get up to a 70% repair speed. Is it worth to run 60 or 70? You know, there's a lot more beneficial perks to be running, like marked target. You know, so rather than running general mechanic... I chose to run with camouflage experience, well, expertise, or let's say I had to choose between general mechanic and rapid loading. I would rather choose rapid loading because it's still going to take either 3.5 seconds to get the track on or four seconds to get the track on. Is that 0.5 of a second really worth it when you could be running a separate perk, supply conversion, for instance, controlled impact, pain tolerance, safe stowage? You know, it's general mechanic 
can be useful. But on mediums and heavies, I do not see a use for it. Turtless Tank Destroyers is the best one to use General Mechanic on. Now, Track Mechanic, I recommend it for everything. Put it on everything. Everything. Okay, now that you guys are here, we're near the end, let's go ahead and go over a couple of little basic build setups. For the three first perks that you're going to want to do, depending on what tank you're in, Six Sense will be your first perk. If you're inside of a heavy tank, I would highly recommend Track Mechanic, just to be able to get back up and on the move quickly, because getting tracked just sucks. You know, and then let's say you're running with premium consumables plus this one, you're going to have 40% repair speed. So that's a total of six seconds it's going to take to get your track back on, which is a lot better than, let's say, nine and a half seconds or eight and a half seconds it would actually take to begin with, with only just a regular, cons regular consumables on. Nine seconds or 8.5 seconds. Now, next up, six cents. Track Mechanic, Born Leader. Those three perks are universal. They will help you get through anything. Born Leader is going to help with reload. It's going to help with your repair time. It's going to help increase everything overall because of crew performance. Next up, your choice of rapid loading. Situational awareness can be really good to have. Muffled Shot. I recommend Muffled Shot on every single tank. It doesn't matter what it is. Well, artillery. I, I don't think you need it on artillery. Nah, nah, nah. Already can go drive in a river. Yes, that's what they need to do. Yes. Alrighty, well... Let's say for a super heavy build, or for a beginner, someone who is newer to the game, something just to help you guys out. Repair time, and knowing if you're spotted. That's going to help you out tremendously. Along with that, view range. Not a lot of people are running view range right now. View range is going to be the biggest advantage on the field. So far, I've been doing a lot of foliage builds, hitting up some spots, taking cover, getting locked down. But then we have my 60 TP build, which is just full offensive. Six cents, rapid loading, born leader, gunsmith, because it's broken. Of course, I want to use it. It's broken. Rapid aim, steady aim, snapshot. Run and gun, track mechanic. Now, I do not have muffled shot on my 50 TP, which, and my 60 TP. Um, once gunsmith is fixed, I will be putting muffled shot on it. But until then, I'm going to use it because it's broken. Uh, the T22 medium, this is actually originally my 279E crew. We got six cents, rapid loading, born leader, rapid aim, steady aim, snapshot, run and gun. Clutch braking, track mechanic. Now, this thing is actually set up to be get up in the front row and just have pinpoint precision for weak spots. I don't load a lot of premium inside my 279E anymore just because of the high penetration rules that we are capable of getting right now. And now, let's take a look. This is actually the FV4005 crew. Just to anybody who wants to get my builds, I'm running six cents, rapid loading, born leader, steady aim, snapshot, run and gun. Rapid aim, muffled shot, track mechanic. You guys kind of see the little, I don't know, all the accuracy bonuses here. But then, you know, we didn't really go over the LPC crew here. Now, you guys have seen me play my LPC in live streams. And you've seen me pull out matches 4,000, 5,000, 3,000, and then consistently in the 2,200 range with some games. And then, you know, occasionally I get knocked out immediately, but that happens to the best of us. It happens to all of us. You know, it's all about positioning and maps and knowing what's going on. So we have Born Leader, Rapid Loading, because it's an auto loader. I don't want to get caught out. Camouflage Expertise. Yes, Camouflage Expertise. Muffled Shot, Silent Driving, Situational Awareness, Sixth Sense, Track Mechanic, Firefighting. Firefighting, I'm probably going to be taking off. But if you guys noticed, I don't have a single accuracy perk on this tank. You don't need to run accuracy to have a good tank. Keep in mind, my LPC has a 0.4 gun dispersion value. You know, and I like to get up close with my LPC and do a little bit of spotting, but then get in and rush. Now, the Bone Shaker, this is actually the T11 OE3 crew. We are running 6 cents, rapid loading, born leader, 
clutch braking, off-road driving, as I said, combine these two just to give you the extra advantage with your front-facing turrets that are n turretless tanks. You know, being able to get realigned and get on target is going to really help out. Steady aim, just to give us the extra little bit of advantage towards mid-range to long-range shots. Along with that, firefighting, just because this crew has put together the first day that their perks were came out. But I have respected a couple of times in firefighting. I kind of feel like I need it. I've had a couple of moments where my OE3 has been just uh, a blaze of glory. Up next, we have track mechanic and general mechanic. Because if our tracks get taken off, we want to get them up as fast as we can. We want to stay on the move, stay mobile. On super heavies, I don't see a point of general mechanic. I've already gone over that. We're going to skip it. Up next, T54E2. This is also my T11 OE5 crew. So we're running Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Dead Eye, Sixth Sense, Track Mechanic, Clutch Braking, Steady Aim, Firefighting, Situational Awareness. Now, originally, whenever I was putting this together, I thought to myself, do I want to run with, let's say, rather than running Clutch Braking, do I want to run Rapid Aim? But then looking at the way the tank was set up, I felt like Clutch Braking would benefit the OA5 more because it already has a fast turret rotation, but the hull is lacking compared to the turret. So why not buff the hull rotation just to give us the extra little bit we need to get back on track and prevent mediums and light tanks from circling us. Not just that, being able to come up and quickly readjust into a position, side scraping, it's going to help out a lot. So up next, the Vanguard crew. You know what? I'm not even going to go over this. I don't want you guys to have my Vanguard crew. That would be just horrible just kidding here we go born leader camouflage expertise muffled shot green thumb six cents situational awareness comms technician track mechanic mark target now as a scout tank this is a really good build and basically a lot of the perks are in the second part of the tree here for everything silent driving completely useless for light tanks when building a light tank crew it's only going to be for light tanks track mechanic always track mechanic love track mechanic greatest perk in the world right there and let's go ahead and for the last one we're only going to do one more and we're done the way that my machine is set up for fast heavy rushing to get in and out quickly six cents rapid loading it's an auto loader of course born leader so as you can see these are the three first perks that come to mind rapid loading you know, you can choose to use this or not if you want to. Next up, we have Steady Aim, 10% Increase, Clutch Braking, Firefighting. Okay, that's there. Track Mechanic, Situational Awareness, and then Controlled Impact. Get in. You know, if I see a light tank and I'm going to ram them, I want to make sure I really hurt them, get them out of the way, and just go next. Well, I went over perks. I gave my opinion on a couple of them. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like. Uh, if there's anything that you guys feel is different on how I rated the perks or how I went over them, uh, let me know if there's certain builds that you like compared to what I like. I mean, this is really all in my opinion. So, yeah, it's it's up there though. You know, I mean, I, I've used a lot of the perks in, in game. And so far, I would say... The ones that don't impress me too much would be Iron Mace. Iron Mace and Crew Protection. As a free-to-play player, Crew Protection can be extremely beneficial. But repair times and concealment are going to make some of the biggest differences inside your gameplay. Muffled Shot, I highly recommend to have on every single tank. There's a couple, you probably don't really need it. Lower caliber guns aren't as effective as high caliber guns. 105s, 120s, they're heavily effective. 90 millimeters is kind of that middle ground. By having muffled shot, we'll just give you the extra icing on the cake. Um, thanks for tuning in. You guys have a great night, day, morning, whatever time it is for you. I'm going to go take a shower. I just got off work and I decided to be like, hey, you know what? It's perks. Let's hit up some perks. Indeed. Yeah. It's like eternal shower. Hot water. Yeah, that, 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 that's what's going to go on. Totally. All right, but yeah, you know, down in the comments, let me know what your perk builds are. Let me know what some of your first perks that you guys like to use. Um, next up, we'll be going over equipment, builds for certain tanks, and just putting together something that's going to be absolutely nasty. I mean, if you guys think it's nasty, I think it's nasty. Until then, take it easy. It was nice having you here.